I've been wanting to experiment with this protopasta composite iron PLA, and it's because they claim it's magnetic. Now, it's not the cheapest filament, $35 for half a kilogram, and it's probably a little bit tougher to print, but it's 45% by weight iron powder, which they say makes it ferromagnetic, which means magnets can stick to it. So I took the spool and I took a magnet, and sure enough, magnets stick to it and hold. So I thought, what could I do with this filament? What could I do that's magnetic? So I got a couple ideas. So let's play with it right here at Filament Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. I have this magnetic pen, and what makes it a magnetic pen is it's made up of magnets, little tiny barrel magnets. Now you can take it apart and it comes with little balls. You can make little fidget items, but what I think is really cool is these magnets are super, super strong. My first thought of what if I printed something like this with the filament and how would it react to these really strong magnets? So I had to get dimensions from them first. And that was a little bit of a challenge because it wanted to stick to the metal calipers. But I got all the dimensions, including the inside diameter, and then I went to Tinkercad and easily reproduced this thing. So here it is with dimensions. And all I did was take a cylinder, and then I took a whole cylinder and ran it through the middle to make the six millimeter hole. And then grouped them together. So this was real easy to do. And then I could export it and slice it. I brought it into Bamboo Studio and I'm going to print it on the A1 Mini at a 0.2 layer height. It said it would only take 12 minutes to print. And I printed it with a bunch of walls so it ended up just coming out solid. One solid piece of rings of plastic. And the Mini handled this beautifully. It printed that filament perfectly. There was no issues with printing this stuff. Even though it's a little bit rough, it handled it just perfect. When I held the 3D print near the magnet, it grabbed it no problem but it wasn't super, super strong. So this is no different than when I put the magnet on the spool of filament. So I wanted to see if the magnetism would carry through. So if I put a metal ball on the magnet, it holds it just fine. But when I put that metal ball next to the 3D print, the magnetism does not come through at all. But this is where it got interesting. If I have two magnets and their opposite poles attract, but I put the same pole south to south, these magnets are so strong, it does not want to connect to that thing. It wants to fly right off this rod. So what would happen if I put the 3D print in there? Well, the 3D print connects to one magnet, and then the north connects to it from the other side, like you would kind of expect if it was working as a true magnet. But when I bring the south magnet in, it's resisting it just like you'd expect until I get real close. And then it connects. So this 3D print will actually allow a south to connect to south. So it's like forming two separate magnets. That is a unique property. I don't know what you do with that, but that seems really unique. Next, I wanted to test that on an electric motor and a real basic electric motor that I found on Amazon. This has got a permanent magnet connected to two metal plates to form the stator that goes around the rotor that spins inside of it. And then there's a commuter here, which makes the electrical connections for it to spin. So my question was, could I replace these two metal plates with 3D printed plates using that same filament? Would it work? So let's try it out. Now it came with these battery holders for AA batteries, but I didn't have a lot of luck with those. So I just put it on a power supply and got it to spin, but it took almost 10 volts to do it. And then I had to position with my hand the rotor to be in the right position while it's spinning, but at least I got it spinning. So now I was ready to take the metal plates off and see if I could reproduce them with the protopasta filament. So I took every dimension that I could and tried to get the curve right so it didn't hit the rotor and also got the other dimensions, including the mounting holes in the right position. And I did this in Tinkercad. Now, the first time I did it, I didn't put dimples in to hold the magnet. So the magnet kept falling into the rotor. So what I did is went back and added these little lips to hold the magnet in place, and that did the trick. This was now ready to send it to the slicer and print it on the A1 Mini. So I did the same thing, a 0.2 layer height. It says 27 minutes to print it, and again, it's solid all the way through because I just did multiple walls. I didn't use a brim or a raft, but it's a two millimeter wide thickness, and that stuck to the bed just fine on the A1 Mini. And when I compared them, I got my dimensions right. So this looked like it was gonna fit just perfectly fine. 
I mounted the 3D printed plates to the same location as the metal ones, put the magnet in place. I spun the rotor with the magnet in place just to make sure it wasn't hitting anywhere. So I think I got the dimensions right. And I hooked it up to the power supply and spun it like before, but I could not get this thing to work. I cranked up the voltage a little bit, but I started to realize that this power supply couldn't really handle it. It wouldn't go much beyond the 10 volts. So I switched to a different power supply that could go higher and higher current. And look at this, it spun. The 3D prints are not as strong a magnet, so it needed more voltage in the rotor, but it started spinning and was pulling at 13.5 to 13.8 volts. This thing was spinning smoothly and I could move it around. It wouldn't stall. So these 3D printed brackets were working beautifully. In fact, it seemed to be running a little smoother than it was with the metal. I don't know why, but it was. This was really unique. And speaking of unique, check out PCBWay.com's latest feature. You can come in here and you can get multicolor printing on a circuit board. That's right, you can select it and you can take an image, any image you want, and they can overlay that right on your circuit board with their special printer. This is a new feature they've got, so if you're into circuit boards or electronics, I highly suggest you check out PCBWay and get this feature on your next circuit board. PCBWay.com, check them out. So I was pleasantly surprised that this thing worked. It worked really well and it was a lot of fun to make this. So I'm wondering what other things I can make with this protopasta filament. If you have ideas, let me know in the comments below. The next logical step seems to be a simple electromagnet where you take an iron nail and wrap it with wire, only I'll 3D print the iron nail and see if I can get it to work. The problem is it does produce heat and that may melt the plastic. And if I can get this to work, then maybe I can make a rotor for that motor and see if I can get it to spin. Anyway, let me know what thoughts you have in the comments below. I want to shout out a special thank you to all my Patreon supporters. Many of you have been with me for a long time, and I really appreciate it. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or a membership at Thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo down there and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hellebuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.